In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about my iPad Pro. It's the M1 edition, 11 inch version. I've been using it for my photographic work, business work, emails, organizing YouTube videos. And today I'm gonna to show you how I go about importing images into Lightroom, some of the accessories I use with it, and how I edit. So I'd been wanting an iPad Pro for quite a while. Uh, the M1 version took quite a while to get to New Zealand, so I held off and held off and held off. But I wanted something that I can watch movies on, get ideas for YouTube videos, be a bit more creative with the pencil and also just for traveling around in the van it's been really fantastic. I was really close to getting the 12.9 inch version but I decided in the end just to go with the 11 inch and I'm really happy I did honestly it's been fantastic and I don't feel like I need it to be any bigger especially when I have the MacBook. So this isn't going to be a tech review or anything like that that's not really what my channel is about but all I can say is that this thing has lived up to all my expectations. Some of the software could be a little bit better a little bit more desktop OS but I mean Everybody talks about that and it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen. As always, there'll be timestamps in this video so you can skip back and forth between subjects. Hopefully this won't be too long. But first off, I'm gonna show you guys all the accessories that I purchased with it. There's not many, but the things I am using, I've been really happy with. So the first thing I have is this paper-like screen protector. It is the genuine paper-like branded screen protector and it is really fantastic. It comes with a pack of two and I just got it online at on the Rubber Monkey store in New Zealand here. Uh, this is the first one, I still have the spare but it is quite scratched up and I'm not an artist or anything so I don't use it a lot for drawing. Um, so it does show scratches but it still looks great and you don't really notice it when the screen is on. The only downside with it is when you're editing photos and <laughs> being a photographer, I'm still undecided whether I'm gonna take it off or not but the matte look does change a little bit how I, you edit photos and how clear you can see the details. So that's something I'm gonna have to think about, but all in all, it was really easy to put on and there's no bubbles or anything like that on it, so happy with that. Next, obviously I got the Apple Pencil with it. It's not included when you buy the iPad. Apple really like to squeeze you out of all of your money. So when you buy it, it just comes with the iPad itself and you know the cable and all that. Um, so yeah, I bought the Apple Pencil to go with it. And then I also bought the Magic uh, Keyboard Smart Folio thing, I believe it's called. <laughs> it really does make it feel like a laptop. The keyboard is really nice. It's really nice and easy to type on. So I do really love that. I have it on there most of the time. The only time I really take it off is when I'm editing photos or something like that, or doing a bit of drawing obviously, but I'm pretty much using this as for all my emails, all my calendar apps, my business apps. So obviously that just clips off like that. The other accessory I use with it quite a lot is this little um, SD card reader. It's a USB-C one and uh, it does have the micro SD and full size SD. So that's what I use to import all my photos into Lightroom. The other good thing about the iPad Pro is you can use external SSD drives. So this is my two terabyte uh, Samsung T7 USB drive and I use it just with the standard USB-C cable. When you plug it in, it's automatically recognized in the files app and you can just jump into editing, uh, even watching movies or something like that. It all works straight off the Samsung T7. And last but not least, I use my Sony XM4 headphones. If you guys want, let me know and I'll do a separate review on these, but these are my favorite headphones and I've had quite a few now. I did have the XM3s and I upgraded to the XM4s recently. They're very similar, but there is a few upgrades that make it worth it in my opinion. So that's all the accessories I'm using with it. With that being said, let's jump into Lightroom and I will import some photos, show you how I edit them and export them. So like I said, I'm just using this little USB-C uh, SD card reader with the micro SD and the full size SD card slot. I'll put all the links in the description to all the stuff I'm using uh, in this review. So it just plugs straight in like so. And then when it's the SD card's inserted, it will automatically come up in Lightroom, there it goes, um, that a device is connected and you can go ahead and start importing the photos. Lately I've been using this Lightroom mobile app for all of my personal photography work. Uh, I'm not totally sold on it yet, but I don't shoot a lot in terms of like quantity for my personal work. I do use my cameras a lot, but it's usually a very low shot count. So I need to upgrade my storage if I'm gonna stick with this, but I am really liking it, and I like being able to access my photos wherever I am. So anyway, this is what's on my SD card from today's video. You would have seen that already, hopefully. It was just a short one. Uh, I'm just gonna, you can go ahead and just select uh, whatever ones you want, or you can just choose all of them. Once you've selected all the photos you want, you just come up here and you can make a new album. So we'll call this one, I don't know, YouTube, demo, iPad, and then click import. 
So it does work really, really fast. As you can see, these are all raw files from the Sony a7S III. Obviously, it's only a 12 megapixel camera, but they're not the smallest files still being raws. So once they're all in there, you can see down here, uh, that's our new album that we've created. So once these raw files are all uploaded to the cloud, you can go into the settings and go to local storage. And when you clear cache, what it does is delete the raw files from the iPad itself to free up the storage and just stores them online. To make that happen, all I do is go to cloud storage and only download smart previews is selected. So once you're in Lightroom, it's just like Lightroom Mobile on your computer. It has everything that the normal Lightroom has pretty much, everything I need anyway for my personal work especially. Um, all your selective adjustments, spot removal, cropping, presets. I do have my presets in here as well. Um, if you're not familiar, you can actually import them on a mobile device. So you have to install Lightroom Mobile on your computer and then you can import your presets there and they already sh they automatically show up in the mobile device that you're using. So these sync across my phone and everything like that as well. So um, I don't really do many adjustments other than the standard stuff when I'm editing my images. So I'll just go through while I'm talking about it and edit some of these um, photos here for you so you can see what the process is like. But as you can see, it's really, really fast. Um, there's no lag whatsoever on this uh, iPad. It's such a breeze for editing photos. Usually when I'm editing them, I just use the universal preset, but it's down to your individual taste. You guys would have seen these photos uh, on that latest review, like I was saying. If you tap the screen, it goes full screen, and then you can zoom in and have a look around as well. It's such a fluid experience. Uh, you guys aren't going to see all of that because I'm filming this video in 25p, whereas this iPad Pro has the really high, high refresh rate, so the, the experience is really, really fluid. Maybe we'll make a black and white one as well. I always feel like I need to talk non-stop when I'm making these videos. We can remove the USB card reader now as well, so get that out of the way. You obviously don't have to use the pencil, but I quite like using it. I've been wanting to take a few photos of this place for a while now. I took some on my Fuji as well, uh, but like I said, these were all taken with the uh, Sony A7S III. preset on all these photos. I made this preset, this is a separate one that's not included in the normal pack. I made this one mostly for matching when I do shoot portrait film, which hasn't happened for a while now. But I was shooting film for quite a while and I'll probably get into it soon as well. I've been looking for a medium format camera for quite a while now, but I can't find anything that I want that's in my budget. So. Seems like prices of film cameras are just going nuts at the moment. Um, you can sync all these settings as well or just copy and paste them. So you don't have to do this every time. I really love the colors of the uh, A7S III as well. So once I've gone through and edited all the photos that I want to edit, I'll show you guys the uh, um, export process. But it does have all the extra adjustments here so you can use the radial filter tool if you want to do that and uh, bring down highlights for certain areas or whatever. You've got the cropping tool like normal to straighten images out and one thing I do quite a lot is the geometry one, uh, the automatic. Uh, that works quite well I find. So once I've gone through and I've edited all my photos like I want them to look, um, you can then go ahead, select the ones that you want. Uh, let's go with this one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and then go down to share. Uh, and then if you click on this button here, the export to camera roll, you can change the settings to all the ones you want. I just have it to large 
uh, and then you can also rename them and, and everything like that. So once you've got that set up, it does remember and then you just hit export to camera roll. And it is quite fast as you can see, especially if the files are in the, the raw files are actually in the iPad. And as you can see, they are all in there in my photos app, ready to be shared or whatever you want to do with them. So it's a really nice process. I just really enjoy the tactile feel of it and just you know, using a pencil and, and editing photos this way, it is really pleasant. It's definitely not ideal for wedding photography or anything when you're doing, you know, a lot of images at once. But, you know, for me, this works really well. And I just enjoy the process more than using them on my laptop. So like I was saying, these photos are all uploaded to the cloud now. So I can go into that settings menu and delete the cache. And that's just going to clear all those files off of my iPad to free up the space internally. So that's how I edit photos on my iPad Pro. If you guys have any other questions or you want me to go deeper into the iPad Pro itself and you know show you guys some other features or other apps that I'm using, um, let me know in the comments and we'll do that for you. So thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel, I hope you got something out of this. If not, I hope it was at least fun to watch. So give me a thumbs up if you feel like it and I'll see you in the next video, probably tomorrow or the next day. Thanks for watching.